Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to this um, keynote about uh, China and the Chinese market. We live in a world in which the news about what happens in other continents gets closer and quicker to us than what happens to our neighbor next door. We live in a world in which we buy and uh, acquire and participate in services and products that are made in countries that sometimes we don't know how to locate in a map, yes? But still, that means we are in a globalized world. And mobile is part of the tip of that spear. So now the question is, when you or us, when I was an Android developer, um, consider that we are global, are we being truly global? Or are we always leaving one part of the world aside? The fact that, we, that China is not systematically integrated in Google Play is not the excuse not to launch in China. So what we are going to explain today is when we have this elephant in the room saying, yeah, China, we could launch, but all these buts that we justify to ourselves not to launch in China, we're going to see how true they are or not. So let's start with size. How big is the market in China, the mobile market in China? So just a couple of numbers. Population of China is 20% of the world population. But this 20% holds a 30% of the smartphone population in China. There is a lot of smartphones in China. The penetration is like 50% of the population. To make a, um, a comparison, Europe has an average of 60%. So we are not talking about an underdeveloped or underinterested country in smartphones. There is a huge volume of them. OK, so the first catch is, right, there's a lot of volume. But in terms of revenue, you know, there's markets like the US or something that are like good in terms of making monetization potential or maybe Germany or the UK. But China, is it good for monetization potential? Well, actually, China surpassed the US already. They are the biggest country in terms of revenue generation in China. And it's going to keep growing. So the interesting part for you Android developers is that 71% of the devices of smartphones in China are Android. Yeah. So we're talking about um, $16 billion uh, generated in China per year that are going to grow in that uh, line uh, exponentially. I don't have the graph that shows, but China is going to be more and more part of the world. Currently, it's about 29%. In a couple of years, it's going to be 32%. So right, we have huge amount of population, Huge amount of money, but we know that the issue is that we cannot find high-value users in China because Chinese don't spend individually in quality and in um, uh, services. It's more like a mass market of trial, but not really engaging, right? Well, that again is wrong because when we look at Chinese mobile life, they are replacing what you have in that column over there is the smartphone sets. The bottom are the entry level. The highest, in yellow, is the $600 plus devices. The biggest growth we are seeing year on year is on the most expensive phones. China is no longer a country of Java buttons phones. They have 300 and above majority of smartphones. They are heavy investors in phones. Okay? So we are talking about a large, very profitable audience with um, interest on spending on their mobile, on the machine. Now, as you all know, it doesn't matter how big is the addressable audience or how big is the potential of revenue if there is no trust in spending. And this happens in many parts of Europe. If you don't trust the phone to spend, if you are not used to spend on your phone, it will be very difficult to convert a free trial into a paid user. So what is the Chinese mentality? Do they trust spending on their phones? Let's talk, let's talk about online payment first. So online payment happens on mobile first. Chinese buy on their phone first. What this graph shows is the propensity of a user to spend on their mobile, which means that when your service, your app, your um, game is exposed to a Chinese or to an American, and they like what they are seeing, the Chinese is twice as likely to pay. 56% of the purchases in China happen on mobile first. And these are online payments. When we talk about offline payments, about pay services, then it's a fever. 
70% of Chinese prefer to pay with their phone rather than with anything else, right? So let's recap. We have this huge audience that spend of high, high amounts of money into their phones, and that they consider that buying on the phone and paying with it is their favorite way of spending. Yeah? So it looks like an interestingly, interesting market to explore. OK, what is the, um, the, the difficult part? It's the, the content, right? Because I have, I have heard that from many developers, and probably you also have uh, this rumor, Chinese only play Chinese games. They only like Chinese content. There's no point in launching European-looking services in China because they will not convert, they will not attract users. Right. So here we have the first one, Uber. So Uber um, in China, they decided to launch Uber China, but that was just mainly for um, uh, government reasons. The app itself is the same. It looks exactly the same. Look and feel is the same. It's a map-driven service. It looks exactly as the American version. And their growth, you just have to keep in mind this number below. They started competing with a local um, Uber competitor, which is called Didi, at a growth of users of 23% versus 2% month on month, which led to the acquisition of Uber China by Didi. So it means that 20% of uh, Didi value is what was paid to the investors of Uber in this acquisition. Same business model, same service, same principles, no adaptation to China other than the go-to-market. How did they do that? They consulted with local market experts, local um, influencers, and that is how you get in China. But the service itself, what they developed already, didn't need to change. Yeah? This is Uber. Second example, Airbnb. Airbnb, this is the landing page of Airbnb in China. If you have used Airbnb in Europe, it looks exactly the same. It's only translated. There's no golden dragons around. There's no uh, fire phoenix. It's about <laughs> Airbnb, the same as it is. And they have 13% of their users in China. An American service from San Francisco deployed over there. So they didn't need to change anything. They already had that. So it seems like Chinese are pretty in resonance and pretty aligned with whatever works everywhere else. Yeah? So. These are services. What about games? Games make revenue. These are more apps but, or services, but games. Do Chinese play games that are not Chinese games? When we look at games, we see that in the top 10 games of China, three are from the West. And these are not games that, again, were tweaked and starting adding pandas or something so they were more popular. No, no, the games are exactly the same as they are in the West. Games about barbarians or about uh, um, escaping or about shooting. They are games that were built in the West, exported into China. The interesting part of this slide is on the logos in gray at the top. The success of Western developers happened on Android in China. And it's not about the bigger addressable volume, it's about the trust that Chinese have on Android. Seven out of the 100 top games in uh, iOS in China are from the West, 16 on Android. You know, so double the games are in the top 100. But these double the games make seven times more revenue. So more games, and each of them makes more money than on iOS. Android is the favorite platform to spend and to play in China. Yeah? We're talking about these 16 games generating 15% of the $10 billion market that China meant last year. Yeah. It is an interesting um, ecosystem to participate into. OK? So it's clear that there is an opportunity. So how do we, how do, we do that? How do we try to do that? Why, what is the way to get into China? So there is, um, the first part is that, OK, China is beyond our comfort zone of adding, ticking a box in a developer console that covers all the other countries, or most of them. Yes, it's very fragmented. There's a lot of app stores. But one, they are most of, all of them are Android. You already have the product ready. It's not like um, Tizen or a Symbian or a Windows Phone. You, you have the game already running. 
in these platforms. There's a different SDK, but not a different product. It's just an SDK. It's very easy. And these are not exclusive one another. If you have the game in one of them, you can launch in many others. Yes? So none of them will ask you exclusivity. So it's a very um, democratic for that. Um, the good thing and why Huawei thinks that we can help you guys is because our store is in the top two, top three, depending on how you look at MAUs or revenue. We generate 45 billion downloads every year. So we understand this market. We know how to partner. And what we have, and this is something that is interesting for you guys, is our developer alliance platform. This is what we call the key that opens all the gates of the Great Wall. And why? Because inside you have everything you need. So it doesn't matter if you're producing content for personalization, games, or apps, or VR, or wearables. All the SDKs you need are in there. All the reporting and all the APIs and everything, or push notifications, everything is the same developer alliance. There's already, as you can see, there's already 240,000 developers registered. And we paid them $400 million last year, net. So this is already working. And what we want is content from the West. Because China is already there. We have already access to all the Chinese developers. But we are missing that 30% um, of the top 10. We are missing this 15% of the revenue from the West that are reluctant to come with very good ideas. OK? The good part here, the, my favorite part of the presentation, is how Huawei understands a partnership with developers. Other companies basically accept your content, test it, OK, doesn't, doesn't have bugs, doesn't crash, put it on a store, good luck. If it works, if it's popular, you will be promoted. If not, sorry. Huawei doesn't understand partnership like that. First of all, we spent last year, we paid $30 million to developers that we wanted to succeed, ideas that we thought um, could succeed. So this was paid in advance. There's a funding project. There's something that we invest into to help developers conquer China. And second, we give you the eyeballs you deserve. We organize the go-to-market. We organize the influencers, the face, the events. We are very active in making you guys visible. So I'm not saying it's um, one step or one day. It is a bit of an effort to launch in China. There's government permissions and things like that. All that is correct, but we help you with that. There's different options. There is translation. We also help with that part. We can help with many different things. And this opens basically 30% of your potential. Otherwise, you're capping any PNL you do by 30% before start if you don't consider China in the plan. So what I would advise to do, this is the last slide of my presentation, then we go to questions. We have this QR code, very popular in China. But basically, we have this email, developereu at Huawei.com. You can drop us an email, and I can guarantee we answer to every email we receive, every one of them. Even if we cannot help you, or if there's just for advice, or if your service is in a very draft phase and we're thinking about an idea, or just some guidance about what is popular in China, we answer every one of your emails. This is a very good situation to contact us. As you know, we are probably one of the only successful global stores, and we are now deploying outside of China also. The good thing about partnering with us is that one SDK of Huawei allows you to publish everywhere. So you don't need different ones for China and, and the West. And we are now opening global. So we're talking about 130 million phones sold every year with an embedded store that we can market um, as we want. So um, good opportunity, good way to work. And you already have the product, because all our phones are Android-based. So don't be shy. Drop us an email. If you have any question, let us know. We are here to help. Thank you very much. Any question about anything I said, anything that wasn't clear, or that you would like to know that we haven't covered today? Yes. What is the share distributed to the developer? And how difficult is it to implement? Is it the, the same protocol as Google Play in-app purchases, or very different? Yes, very good question. Um, in-app purchase and freemium is the predominant model, business model in, in China. Um, advertisement is kind of secondary. Premium, there's no presence. Um, at this moment, in that sense, it's quite similar to the West, although in the West there is a bit of a niche still for some premium content. 
in, uh, in China is, is in-app only. The API of in-app is exactly the same. It works very similar to the Google Play one, and the share for Chinese developers is better than in the West. In China, it's 50-50. So 50%. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's worse than in the West, sorry. It's 70-30 um, for, uh, for Europe, 50-50 uh, for China, because there's different tax taxation levels. But still, um, every developer we contact in China that want to launch in Europe and vice versa, they are super happy to do both. So um, it doesn't, it, if, if it didn't make sense, we would change that. And it's um, how the market standard is in China. This will be the case for all the developers we have seen. We have uh, all the other stores apart from Huawei. We can talk in specific business models if you would like to know or specific cases that we have worked on in China. If, as a, again, if you drop us an email, I will give you exact details of how it's split, how does the commercial work over there. We are super transparent with that. Yeah. Please, yeah. Sorry, I missed the last part of the question. How we help developers with? With the administrative issues with the Chinese government. Yes, okay. So um, uh, the Chinese government has um, uh, issued a law that basically um, makes that every game released in China needs a permit. Apps are not affected, by games are. Yeah? So there is different routes to that, um, depending on um, how uh, in a hurry you are. The most popular one is to partner with a local um, distributor. And that is something that in the slide I showed um, about games, Yes, in this one, you can see basically who is launching this one. So Hearthstone is launched by NetEase in China and not Blizzard. So these are local uh, developers that have the permits already or can get them, and then you don't need to uh, get involved into any kind of paperwork or something like that. They get some revenue share, but this is not what Huawei can do. Is not the contract with these guys. What we do is provide you safe distributors. So we recommend who are people like NetEase, and we put <coughs> you in touch with them so you don't need to browse or search for them. So you are at all times under recommendations of trusted sources. That's how we would participate. Offer you some options, and you, the, the contract is between you and them. Huawei doesn't get any kind of involvement in these. We don't get any kind of revenue from that. It's more between you guys. That's one of the, option, the options. The longer one is try to get the permit by your own that it's a bit more tedious, and it requires some visits to China sometimes. So it's, this is the easier route, and if Blizzard and these guys are trying, there's, there's a reason for that. But we can guide you all along the process, in every step. Yeah. Any other question about Chinese lifestyle or about the Huawei store? Hey, thanks for your talk. Um, question about WeChat. So is, is it even possible to, to live next to WeChat? Because I heard that, that everyone is just using WeChat, actually. Um, I'm not sure if I understood your question. If I didn't answer well, please let me know after that. WeChat is a form of living in China. WeChat is the ecosystem that comes from uh, the years of uh, um, QQ and uh, what their, their chat on the internet was. What they have created is um, a magnified version of WhatsApp in China that is a social layer, but also allows you to play uh, games inside, um, a bit like HTML5 games inside, and it has a payment offline codes integrated. Currently, WeChat is the most popular offline payment, like here could be, um, I don't know, Apple Pay or any others. In there is a, is a WeChat. You can pay the tube, you can pay everything with that. Um, which belongs to a very strong uh, company in terms of distribution, which is Tencent, um, who also owns companies like Supercell and, uh, um, and Riot Games, like League of Legends. So they are heavily connected to games. Uh, Tencent is the number one store to distribute in China. And funny enough, it's a partner of Huawei, even if on the App Store we are competitors, and we enable payment systems in China through WeChat. So WeChat is part of the ecosystem in China if you, if you want to get there. It's uh, the biggest monetization potential. The thing is, once that you are part of our developer alliance and you have the permit from Huawei and you have all the clearance to publish in our store, you can then publish in Tencent. It's, uh, there's, no, there's no exclusivity contract or anything like that. Did I answer your, to your question? Okay. 
And follow up question: um, Is there a, a chance to, to is there a chance to um, to work with Firebase in in this direction, or is it completely forbidden or like like? Cut. Um, I don't have the answer for that one. I would need to come back to that. If you could please send us just an email reminder or talk to my colleague or something, then I will come back to you definitely. Sorry, I don't have the answer for that now. Yeah, sure. Hi, thanks for the talk. I actually have two questions. The first one is about content of the apps and whether if that's different than on the Western side in terms of what do we display to users, um, acceptance of the apps in the App Store, and distribution. Hmm. And the second one um, is about the SDK. Is it meant to be like a replacement for Google Play services? Um, hmm. Yeah. OK, um, two very different questions. Um, I'll address the second one first. It's, uh, it's easier to answer. Um, no, we don't believe in replacing Google Play. We think Google Play is a fantastic repository of all the apps in the world. But we think that in terms of discovery experience, Google Play could do a better job. Um, we think that. Um, our role, ultimately, is to retain the user in the hardware ecosystem of Huawei. So um, if we didn't make any effort, if we just offer the vanilla experience of Android, um, we would not be mm, taking all the potential of our phones compared to other manufacturers like maybe the LGs or the Sony or something. So we try to go one extra mile and provide something on top of that. Which means, if you are um, a user that already loves the Google Play experience and you can discover all your new uh, entertainment in there, then our job is done because you will like the phone. If you don't like, uh, if you are like more a Steam mentality of gamer and you like discovery of new things and you want more indie content being promoted or something, then maybe you are not very satisfied with that. And then we give you an alternative. Because the thing is, currently in the Android ecosystem, if you don't like Google Play for entertainment discovery, there is no safe alternative easy to get. There's Amazon App Stores and so on, but it's, it's not so obvious. What we are going to do is an obvious alternative that will, instead of uh, being based on quality, uh, in quantity, sorry, it's going to be based on quality. If you know, if you can search and you know exactly what you are going to look for, then Google Play is a good place to be. If you don't know what you're looking for and you want to be recommended from trusted sources and apps that are all four stars or above, then the Huawei App Store is a good place to, to start. It's a, com um, a completing experience for each other. Yes? That is for the second question. The first one was about the, um, the trends of consumption and, uh, and the, the types of apps that work and this. So it's, a, it's, a very, um, it's very similar to the West market in terms of the more mass market you make an app, the more accessible you make it, the, more, the, the easier it is to, to get a good reach. Um, but the conversion to paid will be maybe lower because you will not generate as much loyalty. In that sense, there are some elements that work well with Chinese audiences. We can cover that offline, but Chinese like RPGs, they like collector elements, they like social layers, they like to compete, they love esports, so multiplayer elements. There's many different elements that combine, that, that are present in the, in the f famous Chinese games. But um, nothing that is completely revolutionary that we cannot imagine from here. You know? And uh, even status of VR and Sony is pretty similar than, than the West. So if you have a good concept that is engaging and working already for the West, you don't need to change a lot to make it accessible to, to China. That's the, the bottom line. But we can, we can give you lists of um, games that are popular and so on. It, it reminds me on something. Sorry, I'm going to put another slide. Um, from this one, the one of purchasing, the one of uh, consumption, paying on mobile. Sorry, almost there. Yeah. These ones are the most popular online payment apps in China. None of them are known in here. But all of them have elements that we can recognize. That's why partnering with someone like us, instead of going on your own, is very useful. Because we can tell you exactly what each of them do and what audience they, they have. And you realize that they are not so different from a counterpart in the West. It's just a matter of knowing the positioning. Yes. So for games, it's kind of the same. You can try Chinese games. You can, try, you can find them. Um, but we will be able to explain what are the elements that, uh, that are interesting there. One interesting fact about promoting a game in China. Um, one of the most popular ways to generate um, boost in your sales in China is to offer, um, I don't know exactly what is the word in English, but they, they equal the store, and that is Huawei budget, equals the money that the user spends. 
you spend one dollar on the game, we give you one more dollar. You spend five dollars, we give you five more dollars worth of credit for the game. The developer gets paid for that. So we fund that money, and it, for you guys, it's the same as if the user paid. But the conversion rate, when we do that, if there's a campaign around it, is incredible. That works really well. And it's not like discounting. Your, you don't lose any kind of in-game economy broken because the user perceives that they are still spending. They're just getting more value. But the object they are buying, they never lost the value. So in other stores, it starts to be the trend saying, OK, I'm going to wait until they make a discount, and I'm going to pay. In there, there's not going to be a discount. You are going to pay your object, and we are going to match on top of that. So that's a, it's, it's something interesting. It, it's a trend that I have not seen so much in the West, but um, over there, is, uh, it works pretty well. Yeah. Other question? Has anyone tried to launch in China yet? Think about why you didn't try yet. And think if any of these reasons are things that I covered today and are rumors that you thought, ah, it's, uh, no, no money, not, no revenue, the people in there, no expensive phones, they don't like our content, it's too complicated. It is not too complicated. It's just a bit more complicated than the basic. But think again, and really, you have an ally. Because after all, we have the same goal. We want your games to succeed in our channels. So we can help you. Just for reference, out of these 45 billion um, downloads, just in China, in the Huawei channel, we have 200 million monthly users. In total, we have 600 million users, because the Huawei store in China is not limited to Huawei devices. So it is a good addressable audience to do some pilot testing from apps that you have already developed or are in the process of. Yeah? Any last question? We're good? Perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.